Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Zero to 60. On this episode, we're putting some subwoofers in the F87 M2. <laughs> I always get these model numbers wrong. Uh, this is Declan's car, it's been on the channel heaps. He's recently bought these Earthquake, I'll put the part number just below because I'm going to get it wrong, but they're an 8 inch standard replacement upgrade subwoofer for I think a lot of the E-Series and F-Series cars. Now these have actually come from JB, the gentleman with the 1M. He has gone all out with the stereo. I did get to hear these in his 1M and he was running it with a aftermarket amp and they sounded insane. These were bassier than my 10 inch aftermarket sub that I have in my E92. But we wanna see and try and work out if we can document if they are much better than a standard F87 sub with a standard amplifier, which I think is how most people are gonna install these. But they're not a cheap speaker. I think. I think you said they're about 220 US each. Something like that. So it is big money. We've got the full sort of install kit that come from JB here. And I've been trying to think and work out the best way to document on video if they work better. And what we have come up with, I'm gonna hop in. Say hi, Declan. It's been a while. So what we've got set up here, uh, Declan's just playing with the volume. Uh, we've got a very expensive free app that I've downloaded and it's gonna measure the, the volume of everything. Um, now generally, back in my old car stereo days, the bass will be the loudest part of the stereo. So improving the subwoofers should give us a louder reading on this decibel meter, but we'll find out. Um, it was the best sort of way I could think of trying to show that they do make more noise. We will of course give our opinion on how they sound as well, but I kind of wanted to document if they do actually put out more noise, more bass, when you've got the same amplifier, because running off the same amplifier is a big deal. Right, DJ, play that song. So there we go. Uh, it's awfully hot in here, but we have hit 89 decibels with the standard subs. That was the volume on the car maxed out, the bass set in the middle. Let's get these subs swapped over and see if they're any louder. Sounds good. Okay, so I want to just film a quick update. Um, we've got well, basically a plan worked out on how to install them. Declan's just finalizing the install on that side over there. But there's a bit to it, and I'll show you guys what you need if you're going to try and fit some of these to your M2 yourself. Um, now, there are four Torx bits that hold the chairs in, or the seats. Um, T50 at the front, T50 at the back on each side. To get them off, you just move the seat back, undo the fronts, move the seat forward, undo the back, and then you can tilt it back like that one over there. Now, getting the subs to actually fit in, if you slide them straight down into the original hole, I'll try and show you when we do the other side, it'll actually bottom out, so you do need one of these spaces. Now, as this had already been fitted to a 1M, we have the spaces to make it work. Now, this will actually raise the speaker up that amount. That gives it clearance to the bottom of the factory sub box. But what you do run into there, oh God, um, the carpet is now very close to touching the cone. It's not a problem on the original speakers. Declan, have you got the original speaker? Here it is. The, uh, the original, now this, this is the way it sits in the car, this top section doesn't actually move. So if the carpet does rub on it, it doesn't matter. The actual part that moves is the cone on the back. Um, so you do need to be aware of that. So if you're going to do this install, make sure you have spaces on the bottom and on the top to, pro well, to protect the cone so it's got movement and it's not going to be touching the carpet. But once you've got those two spaces sorted out, they pretty much bolt straight in which I'll show you right now. So just as a bit of an update, we've got the speakers mounted in. Uh, we had a bit of an issues with the wiring that we were using, but she's all good. Everything is sealed and they actually sound all right so far. One thing we have done with the original speaker grill, which sits like this, it does actually sit down inside the wood area. So we have just filed out rather crudely, just some extra room to clear the, um, the foam part or the, the bit that flexes on the speaker anyway. So hopefully it's gonna be fine. Oh, we can get it all back. I wish I had that on camera. Alright, we're just doing a quick um, listen test. And I didn't catch it on camera, but Declan's initial response was effing oath. <laughs> it sounds so much better. Um, my. I used to be quite into audio. My personal take from what I've heard, it's a much more fuller bass. These sound like they're putting out more, I'd say more deeper, lower notes or a lower frequency, but I don't think it's as loud. I don't think, I don't think the bass is hitting as loud, but there's more bass at a lower volume. 
Yeah, okay. I hope we're not going to get copywritten for that little clip. Um, right, let's go back to the test that we had earlier and just see if it is a higher SPL. See if there is more noise in the cabin, more bass in the cabin. We'll see you guys in a second. So Declan's just setting up the bass at the same level, and we're just going to go flat out, see if it distorts, see if it makes more bass, see what the go is. Oh, have you got that, that same song? Here it is. So yeah, that one peaked at 91, so it's a slightly higher decibel. Um, I wasn't sure if these earthquakes were actually gonna make more noise because they, they're getting the same power. We're not feeding them any more power. When I heard them in the 1M, they hit really, really well, but they had like a 600 watt RMS amp from memory feeding them. Well, they won't be getting anywhere near that much power. They're getting the same power. Something else to keep in mind with these, these are two ohm speakers. We couldn't clarify what the original M2 speakers. They could be 2 ohm, but we're not really sure. Um, regarding the install, pretty good. You will need those spacer plates that I showed you in the clip just before. Um, this actually, these come secondhand from JB with his 1M, um, but they come with two sets of spacer plates, which actually caught us out, we didn't realize. Um, so you will need to make some custom mounts to fit them in and some custom wiring or join the factory wiring because the original plug will not fit. So that is one of the, the downside of these versus the BAF sound. Yeah, just go bad sound, plug and play, done with it. <laughs> <laughs> On the same note, these do sound really good. It's a very full sound. I'm sure JB will get in the comments and he's a proper audiophile. He'll add some, a bit more context to what these comments are. Um, I have to say, JB's car sounded better. Hmm. So you'll probably have to upgrade your amp. <laughs> Not <laughs> but from the little play that we've had there, uh, the way Declan has this car set or the equalizer tune, he runs a little bit more bass than what we've got here. And um, from that little clip that we had just before mm. when I just started caught filming at the end, it does sound good. Sounds much better. Yeah, it's a... Um, you can feel it. It's like a, the difference between a small speaker where it's like tappy kind of bass versus actually just... I don't know. If, yeah, it's like... If this is, if the original speakers were like a, a Bluetooth soundbar, mm. this is like a home theater. Yeah. So the soundbar still makes lots of volume, but this just sounds, it's a nicer sound as yeah, it is. Yeah, it's like when you turn the sub on. Yeah. All right. Would you recommend them? Yeah, absolutely. You would. Especially if JB's going to sell them to you for 100 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> These were quite cheap. Look, they are pretty good. I, my personal opinion after hearing them in this car, I think you will need to, if you're serious about it and you're going to spend the money, get an amp upgrade. But if you manage to get a set secondhand, there's still definitely an upgrade from the factory speakers running through the factory amp. Yeah. Wow. Also, this took us two hours to install thanks to some old speaker wiring we were using that kept breaking <laughs> and it took a long time to work out what was going on. We thought that these speakers were like triggering a fail safe on the amp or something. Anyway, make sure you use good wiring. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.